Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Great Books in 10 Minutes. In this episode we will be analyzing Sophocles' play Antigone. If you would like to watch my summary of Antigone, you can find it on the channel or from the links in the description box and the pinned comment. The primary thesis of Sophocles' Antigone is the individual's obligation to stand against tyranny and unchecked authority. The play delves into the ambiguous space that exists within human-created laws and challenges the ethics of complying with acts of barbarity under the guise of obeying mortal laws. Antigone highlights the notion that an individual's ethical responsibilities supersede the laws of the state if those laws are tyrannical and inhumane. The protagonists resolve to bury her brother Polynices despite the state's prohibition is a manifestation of her conviction in personal autonomy, the precedence of individual freedom over security, and the significance of fulfilling her obligations and the divine law by paying homage to her kin. Antigone prioritizes divine law over man-made law, abandoning King Creon's order in favor of the gods of the underworld, who govern death and burial, and whose laws are rooted in ancient traditions. She refuses to violate the laws of the gods to please a human ruler. Instead, Antigone adheres to the laws of religion and custom, disregarding the king's order. I will bury him myself, and even if I die in the act, that death will be a glory. I will lie with the one I love, and loved by him, an outrage sacred to the gods. Antigone displays unwavering conviction in her belief that her brother's body is not detested by the gods, and Creon's edict can only sway people's opinion to hate her and her family, and not the gods. In response to Creon's confrontation for her disobedience, Antigone boldly asserts that he is a mere mortal and his decree is not above the ancient traditions. She asserts that her primary concern is to please the gods, not the king, and since she will return to the gods, she only cares about acting in accordance with her faith. Creon, the king of Thebes, embodies the dangers of unchecked authority and the aftermath of dismissing the populace's opinion. His choice to penalize Antigone for burying her sibling reflects his inflexible commitment to state laws and his own pride, and acts as a cautionary tale about the necessity of balancing legal regulations with empathy and compassion. The direct consequence of Creon's tyranny is the wrath of gods, highlighting the belief that all tyrannical rules are prone to internal corruption and their collapse without the populace's blessing and satisfaction is inevitable. When Tiresias the prophet cautions Creon regarding his inhumanity towards Antigone and her kin, he warns him that if he fails to alter his decision, the gods will reject offerings and prayers from Thebes. This perspective is indicative that in Sophocles' view, accepting a tyrannical regime would lead a nation towards a bleak course of action, where the divine light and clemency would not shine upon them, because they themselves have accepted a tyrant to guide them towards that dark path. When Haman, Creon's son, the prince of Thebes, attempts to persuade his father to reconsider his decision to leave Polynices' body unburied, he appeals to their familial bond and the opinions of both the citizens and the prophet of Thebes. However, Creon accuses Haman of being swayed by his love for Antigone and remains determined to punish her. In Antigone, Sophocles effectively emphasizes that political authority and military might are not the only sources of power. Antigone's act of rebellion serves as a poignant reminder that a cause that is well-founded and opposes tyranny, even if it originates from the most vulnerable members of society, can wield great influence and have far-reaching consequences. Creon's hubris is evident in his unyielding stance on his harsh decree. He contends that the state belongs to the king and that those who prioritize their individual interest over the common good of the city are useless. Creon as the king believes that his judgment is unerring and his decisions are always correct. He goes so far to proclaim his commands as superior to reason itself and brands anyone who dares to question them as traitors. This irrational and self-centered delusion eventually leads to his own downfall as he loses the support of his people, his family and his reputation by the conclusion of the play. 
Very well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in this literary journey. I hope you found my analysis both enjoyable and thought-provoking. I strive to offer a unique, out-of-the-box perspective on the subjects I explore, acknowledging that they may differ from mainstream interpretations. Remember, you don't have to accept everything I have shared. These are simply my personal thoughts, shaped by years of learning and passion for literature. If you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a member liking, sharing, and subscribing, your engagement helps keep this literary conversation alive. Until next time, keep reading and exploring the world of words.